All right. Hello and welcome back to Media Munchies podcast. Today, I've decided that it's just me. It is just me today. Um, and I've decided to do a bit of a different format this time and do full Anthony Fantano album review. But not actually, because it's actually just going to be me being disorganized, reading some notes, and fully uh, reviewing the album Heartbreak Weather by Niall. So I mentioned this album in the first episode with Nate because we had just listened to it for the first time because it had just come out. This was almost two months ago. <laughs> so this review is a little late and we didn't like it as much as his first album, Flickr. But I don't know. I, I saw potential in it. I saw something. I don't know. In the last couple tracks, not the last couple tracks, but I would say track... Sorry, just looking at my notes here. Track number five until the last one, I see potential. But the first ones really, I don't know. The first ones didn't grab my attention, and I think that was a bit of a problem for Niall. That being said, I would say even the whole album is not as good as his first album, and it, so it sort of has a formula to each song. And it definitely has a structure. It has a storyline, underlying sort of storyline, that it's like, it's his heartbreak story and it's his, like, different dealings with one person. And I think Flickr sort of does that as well, but this one has a more coherent storyline. And I don't know if this does any favors for this album, because there's only so many, I mean... There's a lot of places you can go with a storyline like that, but some of the songs have a bit of a repetitive message and repetitive kind of ideas, and it's good. It's good. I mean, repeat yourself. Go ahead, Niall. Repeat yourself with your messages, but I would say, for example, I'll give you an example here from the album. Arms of a Stranger and New Angel both have a very similar theme, which is... I don't know, sleeping with somebody else to get over somebody else. And it's like, the songs don't exactly sound the same, but it's essentially the same message. And I, I don't mind it, but it, it makes for less originality, maybe. I'm not entirely sure what I'm talking about. But I was hoping to go through it track by track and sort of dissect each track and give them each a rating of how much I like them and then... I guess at the end, give the album an overall rating. Full Anthony Fantano style, although I don't want to keep saying his name because I don't care about him that much. Wow, just spilled the tea. <laughs> All right, so the first song is Heartbreak Weather. I took several pages of notes, by the way. Um, the first song, Heartbreak Weather. Now, <laughs> let me tell you, I did say it was a good intro to the album. However, there's something just, there's something missing from it. And I think it largely has to do with the fact that the music is very loud and it kind of overshadows him singing his voice. So like it's, I guess, mixed weirdly is how other people have put it. So you cannot, it's harder to hear the words and kind of have them stand out. But the chorus lyrics, I, I was just looking at the chorus lyrics and I think it's really good. And I was talking to Gari who agrees with me that the chorus about like sleepwalk living and I would say heartbreak weather too. I, I like the term heartbreak weather. I think he found like an original kind of idea there with that. I wish there were more weather references because I know he did that whole thing with Nile Storm in order to advertise the album, but I wish in the song heartbreak weather there were more references to the weather. Although as a standalone concept, I think it's also good, but like all I'm saying is maybe he could have gone the other way, done something else interesting with that, and that could have spiced up the verses because I don't... I think all the lyrics are a bit jumbled up in the verses, and the verses are not as good. Another thing about it is it, it sounds like the band The 1975 a lot, that, you know, electro-pop kind of background instrumentation, and because of that, it's nothing really original, it's like super, like stand out. So I think it's a decent enough introduction, but it's not like the best song in the whole world. So originally I gave it a four, but I think it has grown on me. 
and so I might increase that to a five. Even in my notes to here, I said, maybe it could grow on me. Because I, <laughs> I started taking these notes <laughs> a long time ago, and like it took me a very long time to record this because I've had this idea for a while. But you know how motivation goes, you know how productivity goes, especially in times like this. So anyways, yeah, I'll give that one a five, maybe five minus. I'm adding this minus system, just, just spice it up, make it more interesting. But anyways, on to the next song, Black and White. My first note about this is, since when does door rhyme with you? Because that's correct. He's like standing at your door. What's the lyric? I'm high and I can't remember a lyric. Oh, kissed you. He said at your door, something, 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 and I kissed you. And it's like, Niall, does that rhyme? <laughs> but anyways, about this song, I don't know. This one's a difficult one because something about it, it could be so much more tender because it's a very tender concept about being in love and stuff. And some of the lyrics, I don't know, where he talks about being older and growing old with this person. And I'm like, okay, it's very tender, but it's just missing something and it's missing the feeling. And I don't feel it. And another thing I said, this, the same thing, is that the lyrics get a bit lost behind the music. And I don't know, they don't stand out, just like in Heartbreak Weather. But anyways, he's chosen this one to be his next single for the album. And I think he released a music video, although bad fan alert, I haven't watched it. But I don't know, I guess I get why he likes it a lot and why he thinks it's a good single because it's like it's got some good emotion it's got some tenderness as i've said a million times however i don't think it's that good and i gave it a three originally which that's very harsh to give a song a three but now maybe a four so i'm gonna say maybe four minus to kind of find that middle ground once again because <laughs> i don't know i don't know Maybe it just grew on me just a little bit. Anyways, the next song is Dear Patience. And this one is another one I have a lot of mixed feelings about. Like, I like the guitar in the verses because it kind of sounds like a clock because it's called Dear Patience. So it's like... Dun, 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 dun. I, can't, I can't even do it. I can't even describe it. But the idea is good. It's just, I don't know if it completely works with the melody he had. I don't know if I'm reaching with this one, to be honest, but I just don't know. I was thinking maybe it could be a piano ballad. I don't know, and it would work better as that. But I don't know, something about this song. I like the chorus, but I only like the chorus later on when there's more instruments. I think the lead up to the first chorus is, it's like, oh, it's leading up to a chorus. And then they play the chorus and they don't add any new instruments over the chorus. And it's, maybe, maybe it's interesting. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's interesting, but I feel like there was too much of a lead up for it to be a great chorus. And at the end, there's like strings playing and you're like, uh, where were these strings in the whole song? I don't know where these strings came from. And I think it's not that good. <laughs> it seemed like I was going to say something good there, to be honest, but I don't think it's that good. And it sort of gets better as it goes along. And I would say it's middle of the road for me but I would give it a three plus, I think. It's not my favorite. It's kind of, just doesn't make sense to me. The next one as well, it, okay, Gari's here and she wants to defend Bend the Rules, which is the next song, but I that just- that bad. It You're doesn't- being too harsh. Maybe I'm being too harsh, but something- Bend the Rules was good. I like, I break the rules. <laughs> bend the Rules. <laughs> bend the Rules was good. I like. It was nice. It wasn't, <laughs> like, it didn't leave an impression, fine, but it wasn't as bad as you say it is. I just- I liked it. I think there's something going- I'd listen to it, like, three times without crying. Would you? <laughs> On repeat, yeah, I would. I think there's just something about it that's getting lost with me. And I mean, maybe it doesn't have to, I don't know. If I could interpret it, I'd say maybe, because it, it sounds kind of cold and it sounds like solemn and it's like, it's trying to be dramatic, but at the same time, it's trying to be numb. And I feel like maybe he's doing that on purpose. But however, if he's doing that on purpose, like, like, is he really... Do I give him that much credit and say, oh yeah, he did this on purpose to get, to capture sort of that numb feeling, but at the same time, it's really hurting 
when you find like out a secret about somebody that like you didn't know before and you're like slowly uncovering the truth because like that's what the song is about and I think he could have gone further with it maybe because I don't like the song so much <laughs> as I've said but if he did choose to do that the sort of numb feeling on purpose because the song doesn't really make me feel anything and I think it could make me feel a lot more for what the lyrics are and maybe he would improve the lyrics a bit more, but I really like the lyric. I'm not saying that you're lying, but you're leaving out the truth. Because it's so real. It's so, like, honest, straight to the point. But at the same time, like, within the song, it provokes a lot of feeling. So sometimes lyrics that are straight to the point, you're like, yeah, whatever. This doesn't hit. But it's like, oh, maybe this one hits. And it's like, this song could be a lot more. But if he's doing the, the numb thing on purpose, I congratulate him for it. And I say, okay, good on ya. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I don't know. Overall, I gave it a 3 out of 10. And I don't know if I'm going to change that. I think maybe it would take a bit longer for this one specifically to grow on me. The next song is Small Talk. And I think this is where the album starts to pick up. Because this one had a bit of feeling. And you're like... Oh, oh, damn. E especially when the, um, whatever instruments come on in the chorus and they're like, and it's like funky, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I said it was like, obviously a slow hands part too, because it has that kind of punchy, like, boom, boom, boom. And <laughs> Can I please just say that you guys... I so wish that they could see. <laughs> oh, see. Well, like what I'm doing with, the, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it would, okay. It might work as a YouTube video. But anyways, another thing about this song is that the pre-chorus oh, okay. is the exact same melody as part of On the Loose. Like, you know, the, the part that's like, okay. But like, it sounds like the part that goes, like wolves who run wild, let passion get too much. Like that part sounds like, um, she'll jump on that flight and meet you that night. It like, it sounds the exact same. Nate pointed it out. And so I guess the song Small Talk is a combination of Slow Hands and On The Loose, although it doesn't really have On The Loose vibes, but another song has On The Loose vibes and we will get to that later. But this one is more Slow Hands vibes, but with the melody of On The Loose for some reason in the pre-chorus. However, I do like this one and yeah, it's funky. It's the first one that really stands out with the, the funky tune. And yeah, I don't know. It's It sounds a bit cowboy. The part after the chorus is like, small talk. And it sounds like a cowboy voice. I don't know. I don't know. It just sounded like a bit of a country voice. If you listen to it, you might, you might see what I mean. But anyways. I gave that one a 6 out of 10. I know I didn't say much about it, but it's good. It's decent, it's funky, and it's better than average and better than the first couple songs on the album. The next song is Nice To Meet Ya, and I don't have much to say about Nice To Meet Ya either. I like it. It's something different, and I feel like it's got a very different structure, like a non-typical structure, because it's got like a verse and then a chorus and then like a I don't know it's just got a structure that I'm not entirely familiar with and it's a bit chaotic and it was a bit chaotic the first time I heard it but I really I really like it you know and I think it's one of the more original ones and the okay I said see I said a lot about these but I feel like they're like boring comments that are just not interesting um so I just want to like go through these quickly until I come upon some comments that are a bit more interesting. This is still fun. I yeah, know. I know, for sure, for sure. People who really, who really do. Yeah, so people who know this album will probably... Yeah, at least give it like a one good hear it before you listen to this. Honestly. Yeah, so yeah, and I gave Nice to Meet Ya a 7 out of 10 because I like it. I like it a bit more than Small Talk as well. I don't know, maybe, maybe my love of Small Talk will grow a bit. Because I just, I think I like Nice to Meet You a bit, but I don't know, I don't know, whatever, whatever. The next song is Put a Little Love on Me. And let me just say, it's a very good piano ballad. And when I first heard it, I was like, damn, this is good. This is a good piano ballad. And some piano ballads by 1D members have been very good. Can I just give an example of Fool for You in The Ditch You Do? Anyways, that's an inside joke. But I, I like... Um, full for you and 
But why would you say that? I thought you don't like Zane. Or is this a whole other podcast? About- this is a whole other podcast about m- whether I like Zane or not. I have a complicated relationship. I, d- I just think Fool For You is a good song. And okay. Zane has some pretty good songs. Eh. Some that are like, eh, but some that are like, oh. <laughs> okay, can I just ask you? Yeah. Pillow Talk. Eh. I, I, I eh. didn't like it. It's like, eh. Yeah. When I, I first it. heard it. I was like, eh, and then I was like, I guess it'll grow on me because I'm a Zayn fan. And I was like, I guess I like it. And then now I hear it, I'm like, eh. Yeah. Okay, cool. But anyways, Put a Little Love on Me. I want to compare it to Harry Styles' song, Falling. Because Falling is another piano song, and I don't think I like it as much as Put a Little Love on Me, if I'm being honest. You've heard Falling, too. Gary's heard Falling, and she's heard Put a Little Love on Me. I don't know if I'd go that far. I'm sorry. You like falling a lot? Yeah. No, okay. See, I'm... some people are a big fan of piano ballads. Personally, myself, I'm not a piano ballad connoisseur, but I like this, the certain ones. I don't know. I pick and choose my favorites, you know? And falling, I don't... The first time I heard falling, I was like, this is great. This really gives me a feeling. But then the more I listened to it, I was like, it's kind of lost on me. It's kind of lost on me. Because I think falling is trying to be something that it's not. Falling is trying to be a lot of things. It's trying to be this breakup song and this self-hate song and this like, I don't know, it's got these specific references and it's got these general feelings. It's like, oh, the Beachwood Cafe for some reason. We're at the Beachwood Cafe. And then it's like, Oh, and I have this really general feeling of I don't like myself and I'm falling and you won't need me again. And it's like, um, I don't know. I don't know if it works so well. But put a little love on me. It's simple to the point. It gets the job done. It's like, hey, listen, we're here. I'm here. My name is Niall. I'm sad. I am sad. And I want love. And... I like it. I like the lyrics. It's not trying too hard. So I gave it a 7 plus. Good piano song. Arms of a Stranger. I think here's another place where the album starts to get good. I don't... (laughs) Okay, right off the bat, I'm going to say it. I don't like the chorus that much. I think it's a bit of a weak chorus. There's a lot going on. A chorus is supposed to be a bit more repetitive, and this chorus is like... And it's got like several sections to it that are like unnecessary and you're like, okay, this chorus has got several sections to it and it's unnecessary. Like everyone's thinking that exact same statement, but it's still good and it's still fun and I like the feeling and I like the pop elements and I like, I don't know, everything about it. It's hard to explain what I like about these later songs. It's just, it just seems like there was more energy put into them and there was more feeling and there was more, I don't know, better mixing and better instruments. And I don't know if there was a difference between the first couple songs that he recorded, like any difference whatsoever. Maybe I'll have to look that up in the last couple, but these ones, I care about them more. And so I gave Arms of a Stranger 7 plus as well. The next song is Everywhere. I, again, I like this. And I just realized when I listened to it um, before starting to record that it sounds like Shawn Mendes, especially like the clapping kind of effect during the uh, pre-chorus sounds like stitches a bit. And like, I don't know. It's got like a Shawn Mendes vibe. (laughs) And I like the chorus because I like how the chorus is all on one note. And it's got a lot of words, but, like, it's a lot of words said fast. (laughs) That was the dumbest thing I've ever said. Oh, goodness gracious. But, yeah, I like the chorus. And there's there's a formula to it. You know, it's good. (laughs) I don't have much to say about it. Eight minus. Next, we get to one of my favorite songs on the album. It's called Cross Your Mind. And I like it because it's got that on the loose, what a feeling vibe. You know, What a Feeling by One Direction. I don't know if you've heard this one, but I Mm -hmm. feel like you would like it. And you would like On the Loose as well because you like to cross your mind. Because it's one of my favorite kind of like funky vibes. Like it does have an On the Loose vibe. And all I said was that it had... See, I didn't say much about this one because I just like it. And I like the vibe. I gave it an 8, which is a good score. It was one of my favorites on the album. I don't know if I like the woo 
<laughs> the, the sound effect. I like cross your mind. Cross your mind was good. I like it's just it. a fun dancing around one. The next song we have is New Angel. And this is the one that Gari was like, I want to hear this one. I want to hear what it sounds like. And you like it, right? I like it. Yeah. Definitely like it. <laughs> All I, I kind of roasted this. I said, it's trying to be different, but this is just Arms of a Stranger. Like like I said in the beginning of this, it's got like a similar message to it, like a similar story. But, you know, I like it, and I like the guitar riff, and it's a bit different, and it's a bit funkier, and it's like, damn, I'm up in the club. Like, I feel like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Well, but I gave it I gave it an eight minus as well. I think the highest score so far is Cross Your Mind, which is an eight. And wait, I need to see what the next one is. <laughs> Sorry, just flipping through the pages. If if I gave anything else a different score. No. No, I didn't give no judgment an eight as well. The highest score I've given is an eight, and I gave no judgment an eight. And I feel like I have to correct that because no judgment is not my fa- I wouldn't call No Judgment my favorite song on this album. I would say Cross Your Mind is, but I don't have much to say about New Angel. It's funky. It's good. Eight minus. No Judgment. I like it. I know. Nate has told me it sounds like Ed Sheeran, and I'm aware, but I can't stop liking it, and that's a problem for me, but it's not that much of a problem. It sounds, I don't know, It's got a, it's got a good vibe, and a really fun vibe as well. And I think it's one of the songs on this album that's just plain fun. And it's not got, like, this feeling behind it as well. Like, I'll be honest, I haven't talked much about the lyrics of the later couple songs. But it's because a lot of them hit in personal places <laughs> that I'm not going to speak about. <laughs> I'm not going to say that about because I hate the feeling of being known. Smash that like button if you hate the feeling of being known. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, oh, yeah. <laughs> We've got a Capricorn moon here, so Shut she up. knows, she knows. <laughs> but anyways. Yeah. However, no judgment is just plain fun, just plain vibing, just plain like, hey, we're chilling, no judgment, we're, we've got a good thing going on, we're, we're just chill. And I, I have fun. So I gave it an 8, maybe I'm gonna say 8 minus, because I'm gonna say Cross Your Mind was the best song. But overall, I'm moving a lot of the scores up. So maybe if I did an average, it'd be higher and not necessarily lower just because I'm moving, no judgment, down to an eight minus. The next track, San Francisco. The first thing I said about San Francisco is maybe I'm projecting, but there's feeling. And I'm like, yeah, listen, there is feeling. The lyrics are really good and the lyrics definitely stand out in this one. I know in the first two tracks, the lyrics did not stand out, but in this one, the lyrics are the main thing about it. And they work. They're good lyrics. They have feeling to them. The core, okay, wait. I also said, I like how it's a bit country. Like, I mean, it's a bit country. It's just got like a bit of a country pop vibe just because of the way the guitar is played, maybe, the way it's sung, maybe. I don't even know. I hope I know what I'm talking about. But I also said that the one part of the song that I don't like is the part where he's like, my mind's made up, 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 up. And it's like, oh, are we in the club? Is the beat about to drop, Niall? I really don't know what's up with that part. I don't know what's up, 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 up yeah. with that part. You know what I'm saying? But... Anyways, it's just a weird addition, and then there's kind of a silence after it, and I'm like, Nile, did you know what to put there? Are you sure you are okay? <laughs> Nile, if you're okay, you know, just tell me. <laughs> but anyways, besides that, I think San Francisco's a great song. I gave it a 7+, plus. maybe I'd move it to an 8-, minus. who knows? That's, I'd be happy with that, thank you. Would you be happy with an 8-, minus? because yeah. I think I would too. I would be happy with an 8-. minus. The next song, I'm speechless. Like, I'm speechless about this song. The lyrics, it's like San Francisco, but like amplified. It's like San Francisco, but it, it sees your soul, you know? San Francisco, but it's like, oh. <laughs> I don't know, I connected to San Francisco more than I did with... Did you? Student. For some reason. Yeah, still is a lot. And I compared it to Put a Little Love on Me because I feel like Put a Little Love on Me is similar because it's like mainly lyrics, not too many instruments. Still, of course, adds a few instruments, but, like, and they're both, like, these sad, you know, songs. 
and I feel like still really hits in a way that put a little love on me. Put a little love on me is just simple. It's just simple, straight up feeling. And it's like, oh, nice. But still, it's like, whoa, you have taken a hold of my heart. Sorry. <laughs> oh, gosh. And I love... I just love the line, even though even though at first I was like skeptical about this one, I like the line, if honesty means telling you the truth. Because it yeah. feels like if somebody else wrote that lyric, you know, yeah. I'd be like, that's a bit dumb. Because of course, honesty means telling the truth, <laughs> you know, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. But like, I feel like Niall knows what he's doing. Niall knows what he's doing when he put that one in. I'll give him credit for this one. Because there's something about if honesty means telling you the truth. It signifies, like, it's difficult to be honest. Honesty is difficult sometimes. And he's he's pouring his heart out. He's pouring his heart out in this part. And the loud chorus, the loud chorus where he's, like, screaming out to the world. And it's, like, loud instruments and loud voice. I just love it. And that one absolutely hits. I can't believe I only gave it a 7 here. But yeah. I would also agree that it's not as good as San Francisco, and I don't like it as much as San Francisco. So, whoops, <laughs> San Francisco. Because although it hits, you know, sometimes you just like a song better than another song. And that's it, that's the T. So maybe I'll give it seven to seven plus, and then still, or, or San Francisco is eight minus. So I've moved everything a bit up, and overall I would say I give the album a, okay, I know, I think I, I think I've changed my mind. I was originally going to give it a 6 plus, which is harsh, I know, but I had to do it because I don't like it too too much. But I think now I'm going to give it a 7 minus because I liked it. It grows on you. It grew on me for sure. The first couple of songs I still don't completely vibe with, but they have grown on me a little bit, and overall it's not too bad. It's just Something about it is not as good as his first album because it doesn't it doesn't have too many like standout tracks that are just like his first album has a lot of standout tracks. Flicker, first of all, whew, even like underrated songs like Mirrors, The Tide, On My Own. Some people don't like On My Own. I really like On My Own. On The Loose, all of that. Very good songs, very good tracks. And yeah, it's not as good. So I'm going to give it a seven minus. And that this has been it for my Media Munchies podcast album review of Heartbreak Weather. I would recommend, like, if you're listening to this and you haven't heard the album, which, I don't know, I've made a lot of references that maybe you wouldn't get, and maybe you stopped listening by now, but if you haven't heard this album, I would recommend it. I would also recommend Flickr, his first album, because Niall's a chill guy. I really like his music, and I think he is underrated. He's an underrated One Direction member, so is Louis, obviously, and I will always advocate for Louis, but I recommend checking out Niall. Yeah, so thanks for tuning into Media Munchies. Hopefully I'll have this edited and put up pretty soon, and that's all for me. Thanks. Goodbye.